This is the big scary concept of cyber extortion. Uh, a lot of times you'll hear this and ransomware kind of used interchangeably. And there's a reason for that. Usually one leads to the other, which is uh, an unfortunate reality that we have to deal with. Uh, but ransoms have skyrocketed over the last couple of years. Uh, cyber criminals are getting more brazen with their attacks. They're going after bigger targets. They're asking for bigger ransoms. Uh, and the again, the, the move to remote services has greatly increased the availability of exposed remote desktop, uh, exposed VPN services, and uh, cloud email phishing that can lead to infection by a uh, by a uh, piece of malware that can then uh, allow the uh, these bad actors access to your network. Once they're in, they'll either encrypt your files or they'll steal, they'll steal them and then demand cryptocurrency from you before you can get access to those back. So pretty bad place to find yourself. So a good example of that is uh, the uh, a, a breach that we noticed uh, a, a few months ago. This uh, started back in March and April. And uh, there was a string of organizations, large scale organizations who we knew dealt with uh, sensitive data very frequently that all started uh, releasing data breach notifications all at right about the same time. So we had uh, Shell, the, the energy company, release a uh, data breach. We had Qualys, a communications company, uh, release notification of a breach. Bombardier Aircraft released notification. Uh, Kroger <laughs> admitted that they had just lost a bunch of data. Uh, the U.S. Department of Human Service or Health and Human Services, the auditor of the state of Washington, uh, Trinity Health, which is a large scale hospital system all came out right about the same time and said we suffered a data breach so we were thinking to ourselves okay well these all need to be related for them to be this close together so what's the common thread here and as it turned out all of these organizations were using a, uh, a piece of hardware called the Excellion file transfer appliance or the FTA uh, this was a piece of hardware that a lot of these organizations had that was built specifically to transfer large volumes of sensitive data in between organizations that uh, that handled it. So, uh, you know, banks and credit unions were big, uh, big users of this kind of software. Uh, now, this was a 20 year old product line. So there were a lot of things that had aged out on the system. It wasn't being maintained very well, but it was still widely used. A uh, group of cyber criminals from a ransomware organization called CLOP were able to break into these uh, these systems and steal large volumes of sensitive data. They then proceeded to hold all these victim organizations for ransom, demanding these million dollar sums uh, to prevent the release of the data they had just stolen from the system. Uh, and Flagstar Bank is a great example of that. Flagstar was, uh, was held hostage for, I believe it was $4 million, uh, which they refused to pay because, well, $4 million is quite a bit of money. But things started to get kind of bad. Things started to get kind of personal for the, uh, the individuals who would be affected by this breach. The ransomware group actually started reaching directly out to clients and customers of the uh, of the bank, letting them know that the bank had been hacked, that their information had been stolen, and if the bank didn't pay the ransom, that their information specifically was going to be released to the public or sold on the dark web. Now that's a fairly terrifying tactic for a lot of uh, a lot of people within that organization. You don't expect to be called by a hacker letting you know that your employer has just lost all of your personal info and it's going to be uh, sent out for the purpose of identity theft if they don't pay. Uh, this caused a lot of public uproar, and it led to uh, a lot of confusion about what should be done in a situation like this. Now, ransom payments, uh, as you can probably imagine, have skyrocketed. This is from quarter four of 2020. We're still waiting for the last little numbers from 2021 to come in. But an average ransom payment for uh, any organization was $220,298. And I would argue this is probably on the low end. One, these are the organizations that are actually reporting paying a ransom. And uh, two, this includes both the high dollar ransomware families like Conti and Klopp, and also the lower ones like Dharma, which are usually about $50,000 each. All right, so thank you so much, everyone. Again, my name is Matt Duran, security consultant with LMG Security. If you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to ask them. You can email me at mduran at lmgsecurity.com. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Look me up on LinkedIn. Uh, and thank you again.